I've known this work since the 1980s when I worked at the Seattle Art Museum. And it's really relatively unknown. Tokita left two important historical records, both the paintings and the wartime diary. Both of them provide insight into a time, into an experience of Japanese immigrant life. This is a self-portrait of my father. He painted it himself. Uh, he even painted these little marks right in here. His ashes were, were always falling down on his sweater and these are the burn marks. Japantown was just up the street on Main Street's uh, 5th, 6th, 7th, I went on up to about 12th Avenue, so we were right on the edge of Japantown. Japantown on Nihomachi was a very lively place, a very uh, thriving place. Not only all these businesses going on, but just all the community activities. When you walk out on the street, you would hear mostly Japanese spoken. There's a claim to a home. Well, he was an immigrant to this country, like immigrants from all over the world. Yes, he was a Japanese immigrant, uh, but he came here to make a new home. He found more and better opportunities here. and. Uh, he started doing what everybody, other Americans were doing, live the American dream. Like many Issei, or first generation, they came here, invested themselves, worked very hard, and as they had children, their children were, were American citizens. They did consider this country and Seattle their home. So this is the sword that he brought over. I identify it as the, the United States Tokita family sword. <laughs> I just knew that he took off on weekends uh, on uh, uh, painting days. Tokita painted in the 1930s in a style we would call realist. At the time it was often called American scene. This is the kind of neutral palette, neutral colors for which he was acclaimed. If you look at his paintings there's a lot of them around the uh, downtown area. Unlike a lot of other paintings of the time, he focuses on the modern city. The skies are webs of overhead telephone wires and wi electrical wires. Um, there's an attention to the signage that emblazoned buildings and the advertising and windows. He was a sign painter, yes. But these were part of the American landscape. He wasn't looking for just a, a pastoral view, uh, but really painted the modern city. Um, in other words, a very picturesque evocation of place. Uh, Tokita shows the detail of place. It's the vernacular detail, but with a great familiarity. Tokita and his colleagues, particularly Nomura, were well known in Seattle in the 1930s. And they were, I would say, embraced or welcomed into the circle by the progressive artists of their time. The, the paintings allow us to 
much more broadly to expand a notion of American art and what contributed to it. Um, the work is very capably done and portrays a view of Seattle um, of a very particular time in a very particular place. But I think it's really important to look back. This is good painting and to make it again part of the history and the art history of this region and, and of American art. From 1936 to 1942, Takeda and his wife managed the Cadillac Hotel. Are you familiar with the Cadillac Hotel? The entryway, the stairs that go up there just to the left is where we, we lived, right in there. A, a lot of the Issei back then, they owned a lot of hotels in that Nihomachi area. For Kamakichi Tokida, he was unique, a little more unique in the sense that his hotel, I mean, he had all kinds of uh, uh, clients, occupants of that hotel, I mean, of, of every race. And they did quite well, apparently. They had appliances for their family. They, uh, Tokida was a trusted manager. But on December 7th of 1941, their lives changed completely. The greatest double cross in history. Jap envoys talk peace in Washington. Jap planes without warning bring war to America. And on that day, about 10 o'clock at night, Tokita began a diary. December 7th. My diary begins today. I intend to continue writing until the day peace returns. I'll keep writing until the day when Japan and the United States shake hands again. This diary is one of the few that the uh, first generation Issei wrote about what he was thinking when, when the war started. The diary is rare among first person documents of this kind. It's very rare that you come across a first person diary uh, by an Issei because most of those focus on the experience of internment camps. Tokita's, about two-thirds of Tokita's diary, or at least what remains of it, is set in the first five months, from December 7th of 41, until the 1st of May, when they were forcibly removed. I put down my pen to reflect upon the situation. My heart is full to bursting. In a moment, we have lost all the value of our existence in this society. Not only have we lost our value, we're unwanted. It would be better if we didn't exist. We know immediately that he is a reflective, thoughtful person. He knew that there was going to be instances where he would need to record what's going on uh, and perhaps use it as a historical record for himself, perhaps. Up until today, I've been writing this diary driven simply by my desire to write. Now that I look back, though, I notice that sometimes I've been writing emotionally, and sometimes I've been writing mainly to record a series of events. That insight, that emotional, personal, individual insight that you don't, you don't get very too often. But our spirits are being ground on a whetstone of anxiety, day in and day out. Little by little, our spirits are worn away. So that was the important part, was just to get that, uh, you know, he actually did go through a lot of hard things. He actually did worry. If I'm writing something for other people to read in the future, the way this diary is now is unsatisfactory as either entertainment or a record. I guess I will just continue doing what I've been doing as time permits. Inconsistent as it is, I'll continue with this diary. It's a nearly day-to-day -day account of the changing regulations, of trying to interpret the regulations and trying to keep up with it, of care for the, their care for their children, of the suspicions and uh, fears of just walking in the street. The radio broadcasts still refer to us as Japan or Japanese, but I tremble to think of how we'll be treated when they begin to call us Japs. There is so much animosity against the Japanese people because of the start of the war and the way that Japan started the war by bombing Pearl Harbor. 
they are as different from ourselves as any people on this planet. The real difference is in their minds. Regardless of what they knew about us, there, what they knew or they didn't, didn't know about us, there's going to be a certain amount of prejudice and resentment against us, and classifying us as, as, as the enemy. The prejudice was already coming out early on. But I think he, he describes that in, in, in the diary quite well. The pressure is coming toward us inch by inch from various directions. Americans are remembering with vengeance in their hearts. We have been repeatedly telling the children to never mention the war. The newspapers have the word Japs written all over the place on every single page. The radio incessantly repeats Japs, Japs, day in and day out. The reality of this war hasn't truly hit us all yet. Eventually there will be no time for such consideration of us. When that time comes, the oppression will be hard to bear. He's a pretty cautious person and he, very thoughtful, so uh, uh, he didn't show it too much with us, but when, when my mom and dad were talking about what was going on, I could tell that there was a lot of concern between the two of them about, mostly about what would happen to us. Remember Pearl Harbor. The president's signature speeds our total defense, energies, and resources. He was trying to predict what would happen, uh, what the government would do. They say that the Department of Justice is completing a plan to remove enemy aliens from vital defense areas of Washington and is going to announce the finalized plan in a few days. There's no telling what kind of fate awaits us. Notices were posted. All persons of Japanese descent were required to register. Japanese people living in America are being driven into a dire situation. Most people who work for American businesses have now been fired. The Japanese people were pretty well established as business people. And uh, that was completely wiped out with the bombing of Pearl Harbor and the start of the war. I think the hotel is really in a danger zone. We might have to move when the plan is announced. Nobody knew at that time and what would happen also like their businesses, their homes, what would happen to those. The most frustrating thing to me now is having everything up in the air and all the various rumors floating around. We are starting to see some unpleasantness caused by this uncertainty. I mean, when your whole future is up in the air, uh, for a lot of these Issei, what's going to happen to all of it? By the time this war is over, all Japanese will be left penniless. To record the process of this transition may be the real purpose of this diary. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, our west coast became a potential combat zone. They say that the Department of Justice is completing a plan to remove enemy aliens from vital defense areas of Washington and is going to announce the finalized plan in a few days. There is no telling what kind of fate awaits us. Evacuation. More than 100,000 men, women and children, all of Japanese ancestry, removed from their homes in the Pacific Coast state to wartime communities established in out-of-the-way places. What they worked a lifetime for, boom, it's all gone and hasn't, even, hasn't recovered even to this day. This once uh, big, prosperous community was all wiped out, it's all gone. Our hotel is situated within the boundary specified that means we're included in the first group to be removed from the city. Oh, there was a lot of hustle and bustle and, and a lot of discussion between mom and dad about uh, what to take with us. And uh, 
I could tell that they really didn't know what to take because we, we weren't sure where we were going. This afternoon, I removed all of my oil paintings from their frames. I decided to keep 14 or 15 paintings. As to the frames, I can discard them if it becomes necessary. Was I scared? Uh, I really was not scared because I knew my parents would take care of us. Now that it has been determined that we will be evacuated, I don't hesitate to show myself in public places anymore. It's kind of strange, but I feel quite at ease walking on the street now. This emotional shift is very hard to explain. We have been in a state of suspense, not knowing how and when the relocation will take place. But now, at least, we are certain that we will be relocated. The more I work with the diary, I am moved by the depth of experience, the range of intellect that is there, the thoughtfulness that he brings to it. And it provides a kind of personal insight far richer than simply an accounting of events. When I received the uh, English translation of the diary and I started reading the diary, I couldn't believe the things that he had written in there, expressing his, his feelings. It's, it's very important to be history told and written by those who actually experienced. It is a record of that time, and uh, it is of value to like uh, succeeding generations. I don't know if that was his intention to leave something behind, but we should, should be glad that he did do it.